Main focus of the task. 1. Competitors should figure out what tools should be used for each process. 2. Competitors should understand the operational principles of tools. 3. Competitors should understand how to use the tools properly. Please check the preparations and tools for this training. Precautions 1. When using the tools, competitors make sure not to apply excessive force to the tools to prevent some damage. 2. Competitors should use the tools according to the manufacturer's manual. 3. Tools should be kept and managed according to the proper management methods for each tool after using them. Please check what you are going to perform on this task. One, safety gear. Working clothes. Wear long sleeved top and long trousers that can cover the whole body. It is for preventing various harms that can be inflicted on the body when working on the task. Safety shoes. The toe part of the shoes should be covered with steel so that they can protect the feet from the falling objects. Gloves. Different types of gloves should be worn depending on the task. When conducting the pipework or the electrical wiring, competitors should wear gloves that have thin layer of rubber coating at each palm or cotton gloves. When dealing with the electricity, wear insulated gloves. The insulated gloves vary in type depending on the operational voltage, therefore, Competitors should check the operational voltage in advance and then wear suitable gloves according to the safety regulations. When brazing or dealing with refrigerant, wear leather gloves. Safety goggles. Wear safety goggles when grinding, drilling, brazing, or dealing with refrigerant. The safety goggles protect the eyes from chemicals, metal, or dust. Piping tools Copper tube cutter It is used when cutting the copper tube for piping. On the top of the cutter, a reamer is attached. There is a spare blade at the turning handle so that when the cutter blade gets blunt or broken, it can be replaced with a new one. When using the copper tube cutter, use your right hand to turn the handle clockwise and then rotate the cutter from inside to outside to cut into the pipe. Use your left hand to hold the copper tube cutter for preventing it from falling when it is rotating around the pipe. If you cut the copper tube deeply at once when using the cutter, the tube can get distorted. It can also shorten the life of the cutter blade and damage it. Therefore, competitors should cut into the pipe through several trials. Copper Pipe Flaring Kit it is a tool used to flare the end of a copper tube for connecting the flare fittings to the components in the refrigeration system. It is consisted of a clamp, which fixes the copper tube in place, a cone, which will be inserted into the flared end of the tube, a yoke connected to the cone, a handle, and a frame. After cutting the pipe, remove some burrs from the end of the pipe with a file and a reamer to conduct the flaring. Two ends of the pipe should be exactly parallel to each other. It is recommended to fit the flare nut to the correct position of the tube before conducting the flaring. 
If tightening the spinning tool too much, the flared part of the tube gets too thin, so be careful of it. The flared part, which is connected to the flare nut, should not occupy more than 100 percentages of its contacting surface. It should not occupy less than 75 percentages of its contacting surface as well. Copper Tube Bender It is used to bend a copper tube into the desired degree. Benders vary in type depending on the tube diameter and the bending radius. Generally, the minimum bending radius is set to be more than a five-fold diameter of the tube. The maximum bending radius is set to be within a ten-fold diameter of the tube. Before bending the copper tube, it is important to straighten it first. If trying to bend the copper tube with a single motion, the bent part of the tube can be distorted or burst. Competitors should be careful of it. When bending the tube to 90 degrees, the bending angle must be exactly 90 degrees. When using the bender, referring to the L and R mark makes it easier to get the desired dimension. The L stands for left and the R stands for right. If using the L and R mark, there is no need to subtract the length of the radius from the total length. Use the L mark if the end of the pipe, the point where you started measuring 100 millimeters, is on the left side. If you bend the tube after matching the point where you put a 100 millimeter mark to the L mark, it is possible to bend the tube into 90 degrees with the desired length along its central axis. Use the R mark if the end of the pipe, the point where you start measuring 100 millimeters, is on the right side and make sure the point where you put a 100 millimeter mark is matched to the R mark when bending. Expander It is used to expand the pipe for connecting two copper tubes which have the same diameter without using any additional components. Before expanding the pipe, remove some burrs from the end of the pipe using a file and a reamer. When using the expander, insert the copper tube into the first groove slightly expanding the front part of the tube. Then, insert the tube all the way into the expander dice. If you try to expand the tube with a single strong movement, the end of the tube might be bursted. Operate the expander over three to four time trials to create the socket part gradually. Vacuum Pump it is a tool used to eliminate any remaining non-condensable gas, such as moisture or air, inside the tubes during evacuation. The performance of the vacuum pump is decided depending on its discharge capacity. The bigger discharge capacity it has, the more time can be saved for the evacuation process. Before using the vacuum pump, open the gas ballast valve to evaporate some moisture inside the oil. Check the adequate amount of oil inside the pump and replace the oil with a new one regularly. It is recommended to replace the oil with new one at least once a year in order to use the vacuum pump in working order. To maintain the efficiency of the vacuum pump and prolong its life, competitors should follow directions and management instructions suggested by the manufacturer. Vacuum Gauge It is a tool that indicates the evacuation level of the system being evacuated. The user instruction may vary depending on the manufacturer, so make sure to be familiar with the user manual provided by the manufacturer. When using it, ensure to apply pressure below atmospheric pressure and be careful not to mix oil. Refrigerant Scale It is used to measure the amount of refrigerant injected into the refrigeration system. Most of the refrigerant scales is digital and portable. The precision varies depending on its model, so make sure to be familiar with the user manual provided by the manufacturer. Refrigerant scale should be placed on a flat ground and should be zeroed before use. Manifold gauge. It is used to measure the vacuum pressure during the evacuation process and charge the refrigeration system with refrigerant. It can also be used to measure the pressure at the high and low pressure part when the refrigeration system is operating. It is consisted of a high pressure gauge, a low pressure gauge, passive valves at the high and low pressure part, connectors at the high and low pressure part, and a joint port. Each gauge should be adjusted to zero before using it.
The rubber packing inside the hose should be replaced with a new one regularly and the end of the hose should always be blocked after finishing to use it. When controlling the passive valves, make sure not to tighten or close the valve with excessive force. Make sure there is no leakage within the manifold gauge. Refrigerant Recovery Machine It is a specialized equipment used to reclaim the refrigerant from the refrigeration system. The refrigerant should be reclaimed using the refrigerant recovery machine in the following cases. If the refrigerant is overcharged, if the repair should be conducted on the faulty system in which the refrigerant is already charged, or if the refrigeration system should be disassembled. Competitors should be familiar with the user manual provided by the manufacturer. The gauge of the recovery machine should be adjusted to zero before using it. The remaining refrigerant inside the recovery machine should be purged after finishing to use it. After using the refrigerant recovery machine, it should be capped and its knob should be turned to close. Refrigerant Cylinder it is a container made of steel or aluminum to make it suitable for keeping, carrying, or charging the refrigerant. Each refrigerant cylinder has its own color depending on its type, so use the suitable refrigerant cylinder. The refrigerant cylinder should be kept away from the fire and should not be kept with inflammable oil or gas. When opening and closing the cylinder valve, make sure not to apply excessive force to it and the protection cap should be capped after using it. Make sure the cylinder does not get corroded by humidity or raindrops. Gas Detector It is a device used to detect the leakage of refrigerant gas. If the tip of the detector is placed where there is some leakage, the alarm rings, making it comparatively convenient to detect some leakages. Be sure that the tip of the detector is not soiled and replace it regularly according to the instructions provided by the manufacturer. Electrical Installation Tools This is a digital multimeter. It is used to measure the electric resistance or voltage. Choose the operation mode with a knob and check the reading shown on it. The user instruction may vary depending on the manufacturer, so be sure to be familiar with the user manual provided by the manufacturer. This device is operated by battery, so make sure to check the battery before and after using it. The red lead-in wire is positive pole and the black lead-in wire is negative pole. Use the suitable lead-in wire for the its pole. Before and after using it, manage the lead-in wires to prevent them from being cut. Clamp meter. It is a measuring instrument that measures the alternating current flowing through electrical components of the refrigerator's electrical devices conveniently without disconnecting the wires. Choose the operation mode with a knob and check the reading shown on it. The user instruction may vary depending on the manufacturer, so make sure to be familiar with the user manual provided by the manufacturer. When measuring alternating current, only one wire must be measured. If two or more wires are clamped together, the current cannot be measured. Its lead-in wire is thin, so be careful of it being cut not to snap back. This device is operated by battery, so make sure to check the battery before and after using it. Mega Ohm Meter It is an equipment that measures the insulation of electrical wires. The applied voltage must be adjusted to match the service voltage of the device such as 100, 250, 500, 1000, and 2000 volts before using it. Therefore, competitors should check the operational voltage of the mega ohm meter before using it. The user instruction may vary depending on the manufacturer, so make sure to be familiar with the user manual provided by the manufacturer. The red lead-in wire is positive pole and the black lead-in wire is negative pole. Use the suitable lead-in wire for the its pole. Before and after using it, manage the lead-in wires to prevent them from being cut. This device is operated by battery, so make sure to check the battery before and after using it. Brazing Tools Oxygen Acetylene Brazing Unit It is consisted of the gas such as oxygen, acetylene, and nitrogen. The pressure gauge which controls the gas pressure and torch. 
Oxygen acetylene gauge. It is installed at the valve of the oxygen acetylene cylinder. It is used to decompress the cylinder pressure to working pressure. The gauge that is closer to the cylinder indicates the remaining amount. On the other hand, the gauge at the torch indicates the used amount. Before using the acetylene gauge, check whether the back fire protector is attached. When connecting the gauge, tighten the connecting part properly and check regularly if there is any leakages. Brazing torch. It enables the oxygen and the acetylene to mix with each other and acts as a handle when brazing. Competitors can control the flame intensity because there are valves to control the amount of oxygen and acetylene individually. When using the brazing torch, attach a brazing tip to it. Therefore, competitors should choose the appropriate tip for the brazing material and purposes. Check for any leakages at the connecting parts before and after using it. Open the torch valve to ignite the flame to neutral. Neutral flame is shown when the long wing-shaped white gets shorter and the center of flame is surrounded by blue-colored flame. It is not allowed to carry a brazing torch around while it is ignited or leave the torch ignited for the upcoming work. After finishing to use the brazing torch, clean the torch tip regularly with a tip cleaner. Spark lighter. It is used when igniting the flame on the brazing torch. When igniting the flame, be careful not to cause any black smoke. Check again the key points of the task we've worked on in this training. In this training, we have learned how to use and manage the tools needed for freezing technology. Everyone, thank you for your hard work.